today. Well, it's kind of difficult to shift down. We we started a journey on Friday, and let me say this to those who came out on Friday, the Lord sees your sacrifice. Amen? Now I've made a promise. I, I heard you. What I preached on Friday, I was supposed to preach on Sunday. And some came in anticipation that I would preach that today, but that's what not what the Lord is is doing today. Amen? Amen. But I promised them that next week we would conclude that because you kind of miss something in destiny if you didn't get the conclusion of what you get out of worship. Uh, we got something on Friday that the world can't give us. We got something on Friday that was a direct deposit from heaven and it comes through true worship you can't buy that we had less than 10 percent that are here right now but the presence of god showed up in this place because true worship gives you something it pulls on something listen to me it releases something and we prove that 20 people prove that on a friday night if you worship god he'll open up the heavens I need Paul, his glory. But today the Lord had caused me to stop by the portion of scripture you have just sang. The 121st division of the sound. I don't need to read it because you just sang it. I know you were paying attention to the lyrics. But in case you didn't, I will lift up my eyes to the hills. From whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. He will not allow your foot to be moved. He who keeps you will not stumble. 
Behold, he who keeps Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. He shall preserve your soul. The Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. The word of God for the people of God, we all say, Amen. Amen. Sometime in the service I will read an email that Elder talked about that was sent to me. Uh, we are the wonderful occasion of spending time with Cancer Society as they were preparing for an event that would be a fundraiser. And while we were there, this testimony came forth. It sounded so bleak, I mean, everything seemingly was going wrong. Uh, but I got an email for you to testify. She said she's in no way discouraged. But, but it, it helped me to realize that God is our help. And so for the time I have before you, the next 30 to 45 minutes, I want to talk about supernatural protection. Supernatural protection protection. In our text this morning, we read a psalm that the Israelites would often sing while they make their, their pilgrimage to the temple on high worship days. As they would come from the corners of the earth to make their way to the temple, they would recite the 121st division of the psalms. I tried to edit Crafty way, I believe Elder is trying to convince me to leave the 121st Psalm. Uh, but I had already canceled singing it because you can't sing it like you don't feel it. I need no amen, I already canceled it. And, uh, that, that every first Sunday we declared in this house the 121st division of the Psalms. But you just can't mumble it, you just can't come and, and, and okay, whatever they're doing, it is a declaration of protection. It is a decree that God has taken us to the first Sunday in the month, that he's brought us to a place that we're gathering now for the upgoing to the temple. And since we are on our way to the temple and the presence of the Lord is going to meet us there, let's prepare the atmosphere. Could you imagine them? Too many dangers walking through the valley in the shadow. Did you know that the valley in the shadow of the death was an alley? It was a place. It was... It's not just a saying that we say, it is an actual place that they would pass through, that criminals will hide us. I don't want to call it no street because I might get in trouble. It's like some of our streets that, that if you know if you walk around the wrong kind of time, that the church say amen, that something will happen. And so here it is that the psalmist relates and writes this psalm of confidence in God's protection over his people. For Israel, the mountains, he says, I will look up my eyes to the hills for whence cometh my help. The mountains symbolize a God-made fortress that kept them protected on every side. You see, if the enemies wanted to attack Israel, they had to come over the mountain top. And while the watchers were watching over at the different spots on the garage, that they would look out and they would see somebody coming over the mountains. It's easy to sneak up on you when there isn't a high place for you to look up and see where your enemy is coming. And so they would stand there and say, thank God for the mountains. It is our hedge of protection. It is the fortress that God has carved up for us. It is a God-made protection. Let me tell you, just like the children of Israel, God has a platoon on watch over you. That he has carved out a series of platoons that are watching over you by day and by night. I don't know if it's just me. It was as if there was a wall around these islands, as if God had put a wall around the islands called the Bahamas and the storms couldn't turn right. They had to go left. They couldn't make their way this way because God had a hedge of protection around them. 
not only for the hills a man-made protection, but it was the place that they would put the temple. Mount Moriah, Mount Sinai, and all in the mountains they would put places of worship. And I know you would wonder, but I think down in the valley, why would the church be in such a lofty place? Why would they put the church in these high spots so that when you were fighting in the valley, you would look up to the hills and know that God is still in control. That no matter how bad things got, you could lift up your eyes and see the light of the temple shining forth, showing forth the glory of God. That even while you're going through your dark places, there ought to be some light in the lighthouse. I told the early morning service that I was so enriched the other day. A couple of weeks ago, uh, someone stopped by and they talked about our steeple. They talked about the light and how they had passed this place. And they didn't know it was a church. But in the time of their sorrow, they were going through something and they saw the lighthouse. Someone say the lighthouse. They, they saw a light with a cross on it. And, and they said, that must be a church. And they came off the road, drove into this place right in time. you got to believe that wasn't a happenstance. Right in time for church service. And when the doors were open, they came in here and they found hope in the lighthouse. That while they were going to their despair, one word from God in the lighthouse changed their direction. I want to tell you, it's an awesome responsibility to keep the doors of the church open because it's hope for the hopeless. It's a message for the next generation. I know sometimes you feel like you don't need it, but there's somebody out there that needs a word from the Lord. He points to these hills and helps us to realize that there's power in the hills. The Hebrew word Shema gives us a, a picture, the Hebrew word that means a, bu a building of a tawny hedge around. This is the truth that the writer was trying to get us to see, that God has such a hedge around us that the evil influence is kept out. That all the people who are trying to get in to do us, God is hedging them out. But just as he is keeping them out, it also keeps us in. And God puts his hedge of protection so that he can keep us in the palm of his hand. But, but the truth is that sometimes we can go too far from God. Sometimes we can push our way that we forget about the presence of God. So we've got to go through some stuff that God can remind us that he's still in control. That he's still watching over us. But I'm almost done today. If I got three points I want to lift and then I'll be out your way. And then I'll be able to sit down and give God my own praise. The first point I want to raise is that we see in verse 3 and 4 that God protects us from danger by keeping us from falling. My friend, God knows our weakness. He knows our every failure in life. And still he wants to use us. He knows how grouchy we could be in the morning and sometimes in the evening. He knows how we can get when we're in traffic and get impatient. He knows how we run lights and cut across traffic. He, he, he knows how we harbor anger deep down in the crevices of our heart. He knows the dumb things that we do. He knows the mistakes that we make. He knows failures and weakness that, that have inside of us when we feel inadequate, when we feel that God is not concerned about, he knows and he's trying to let us not be moved by our circumstance. God is trying to put us in a position that we don't become moved by what's going on around us. Here's the truth of the matter. God wants to order your steps. God wants to direct your path. God wants to control your every move. But some of us are moving without God. I feel all right. I'm almost done. This my back. This certainly that, that that some of us feel like moving just because we can. God whispers to us and says, "Don't go there." God whispers to us, "You shouldn't do that." But you still make the step. You still go where you want. I know I'm preaching down to you. I know I'm coming down. You're out of it. But this is what God wants to say to us. That we've got to give him that control of the silence. We've got to 